They have used the Protestant doctoring. You know that? They have used Protestant doctoring. Yes, yes, they have. They have used, and then they add a bit, a sip of Catholicism in it. A sip and a tip of Catholicism. A what? As a, a tip or a sip of Catholicism in it. Yeah, it has a bit of it, but mainly. Huh? In the sense that there's a king which is... And that king, what the, the Catholic Church, actually, that king, even though he's the head of the, of the Anglican Church, by the way, most of the, you know, it's only recently they have updated about the divorce and other things. Because in Anglican Church, you are allowed to divorce, but the king can't. See, see, this is why I uh, that, which means... Which means I, I, this is why I respect Islam so much. They have one coherent canon which they stick to. Christians like to put so much nonsense. Uh, only dismissing the theology here and dismissing there. And something the Catholic Church would like to do is disgraceful. But for millennia and millennia, there was this notion of limbo. The idea that uh, a child unbaptized would, know he would never know heaven. And then, in 2006, with the strike of the pen, it was no more. And previously, you could bribe your way to heaven at a very costly, costly price. So, yeah. uh, and, uh, and then suddenly, Pope Benedict XVI said, Oh no, we've changed our minds. None of this was ever real. And they've done this, and the swipe of uh, the pen is all gone. And this is why I despise some Christian sects. No, they, they, they dilute uh, the, what was meant in What's your name, by the way? Uh, William. I respect you, William. I admire every, every single sentence that he said, but I will, I will add to your information. William, if Islam makes sense to you, will you accept to be Muslim? I would. Here, you are, you are in dilemma between your ego <laughs> and the truth. Which one you get a favor? Sorry to say it, but that's how it is, by the way. Anglican Church, which I choose. Uh, there is the view, and because the Catholic Church is the Church in Rome, which is it's a successor to the Roman Empire. I understand, I understand. That, that's not my point. The point is. The English Church, the, the Anglican view. Is that there is a unique and actually there's in the act of supremacy which set the Catholic Church adrift. There was this one piece of legislation which says the land of England is an empire, and which it said not that we have empire uh, colonies all over the world. At that time we had not. Yeah. But that there was this unique imperia, uh, uh, a unique imperialism, land, manager. yeah, a unique land realm which had its own endogenous views on how to run itself, uh, separate from any other religion. Uh, or any other public control, and that's one of the reasons I love the Anglican Church oh, because it has. What are you? What are you? What are you? So I'm pontificating. He's, yes, yeah, he's, he's pontificating now, from his high royal, royal moral grounds. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. Yeah? I will tell you a, a very simple thing. Even if you follow the Anglican, the Anglican Church as your mission, they use a text. The Bible, King James, and King James is a modification of, you know, the Catholic. It was a Bible. translation of the original. Bible. Actually, it's not a translation. Rather, I will say it is actually they have dismissed certain chapters, which, which is obviously, I believe you know this. They have dismissed chapters, things being deducted, things being taken out. Mostly from the Old Testament, which I don't have who, so much of an issue. Who allows, who allows someone to deduct and to remove if you believe that was the word of God? Adding to this, there are certain in the translation, there are certain things which has been missing in the translation. For example, I used to have, you know, the old King James Bible, and then when I read the Gospel of John, and I found that. That the begotten son, yeah, about Jesus, yeah, that they will believe you, and then and, and the begotten son, Jesus, yeah, and it was written in red color. Do you know that one I'm talking about? Sorry? It was written in red color, red, and then in the footnote, they will say this is insertion to the text. So, the question is, you and later on with the later version, they have removed that, they removed the footnote, so you could tell to someone in the past who. When they when they printed the Bible, they they actually they documented this and they put this in a red color and they put on the footnote, this is insertion. So which means 
the word begotten son, it must be not there, according to the one who put it in the first place. And then later on, they have removed this and then they put it in, you know, they just, they just kept it. You see here, when we have all of these things, and going back in the, you know, when we go back to the history of the Bible, because I studied kind of, I would say, I, I read enough to understand certain things about the Bible. 180 after Jesus, they found some patches of the New Testament. They didn't find not the full. Well, they're all eyewitnesses count, so they're all going to differ ever so slightly. They're uh, all different eyewitnesses. Now, I, I will say to you, because when you have, 100, when you have 180 years, after Jesus, that means this before 180. Where is the where is the word of Jesus? Where is the word of God? Jesus, from my understanding and your understanding, was a Hebrew, was was a, a Jew, a, a Jew, who was able to speak Hebrew, and as well he was the, the language of that time was Aramaic. Yes. And and the Romans who ruled, uh, yeah, and the Romans who ruled, they spoke Latin. Where the heck the Greek language came from? Greek. Which is the, the, the patches which is written in Greek yeah. about the New Testament, which is later on. Yeah. Now, even it's not the it's not the full it's not the full text even, just patches. And then you will find the first compiled Bible was three hundred just before the Council of Nicaea. Like Constantine. Yeah, yeah, during Constantine time. So we have a three hundred years gap. That three hundred years gap. What happened to the Bible? Where is the original text? Where is the where is the Bible which was in Aramaic language? Where is the Bible which was in Hebrew language? I'm not talking about the Old Testament, I'm talking about the New Testament now. And actually when you read the New Testament, especially the Gospel of John, which many Christians relies most of the faith of Christianity relies on the Gospel of John. For example, begotten son, if you see me, you see the power, and all of these things is basically relying on the Gospel of John. And the other problem of the Gospel of John, we have we have nearly we have nearly five Johns existed at the time of Jesus. Yeah, apart from John the Baptist, there are five Johns. Now, the, uh, the, the disciple, they said the disciple, they said that he has he written some part of the gospel. And then later on, someone else, his name is John, who wrote, for example, the, the, the gospel of John. So we don't have the, exact, the clear cut about the, the original gospel, which is the word of Jesus. Now, even though, so we have a vague character, which is John, we don't know who he, because um, among Christian scholars, when they the book of Revelation, the, the, the John who wrote. They said John, the one who wrote the book of Revelation, they said, they said John the Baptist, the, sorry, John the, the, the disciple, they say this, yeah? But not all of it. So meaning the Gospel of John is not written by John the, the, the disciple. Adding to this, if you read the Gospel of John, the beginning of the Gospel of John, what it says, it's, only, it's a unique actually, and people in the past used to choose their wording. They say, this book is according to John. Yes. Your, your, uh, your English language is your first language, yes? Your mother yes, tongue. Yeah. Have you done any academic research in the past or any academic studies? You have done maybe some. So when you say according to, does that mean he wrote it? Well, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that many of the names of the Bible were aliases or pseudonyms. Uh, we likely will never know. In fact, for the first couple of texts, much of the Old Testament was done by, uh, in the same way the Iliad and the Odyssey were written. I'm, I'm talking about the New Testament. Let's focus on the New Testament. Because, because the dispute, the dispute between Muslims and Christians is for the New Testament. Certain things regarding the New Testament. Not all the Old Testament, there are certain things, of course we disagree. I agree with you, the Old Testament not this is, is the word of God, it's not preserved. But the New Testament, which is you rely on, about your faith, now that New Testament, it has some issues. So these issues, what are they? Now, we have, we have an ambiguous character, John, who apparently this book is attributed to him. We have people who wrote from John, again, ambiguous, big characters, no one knows who are they. they. They wrote, they said, this book is according to John. Meaning someone else wrote it and said, this book is according to John. So we have missing the character John, we have missing John, we have, we have missing of the one who wrote it. And then you say, yeah, this is the word of God. How come? Uh, from academic perspective. From academic perspective, they use empirical evidence of religion to rely on. 
which is so we have to try and read between the lines to see what really was uh, reality and what wasn't. Um, but between the lines, it's so simple. The teachings of Jesus. What did he taught? Did he taught people to worship him, or rather than he was, he was teaching people to worship God? He said, who do you think I am and make up your own mind, didn't he? What? He said, who do you think I am, and then we're supposed to interpret it from our own perspective. I am who I am. Yeah. Again, that's, again, that's a big thing. You know, but actually, you'll find a woman came to Jesus asking him the prayer. Asking about the prayer. What did he say? Oh, our Lord in heaven. Yeah. Let it be, let it be your, let your, your will be on earth just like it is in heaven. Give us the bread of our day and forgive our shortcomings just like we forgive others. Yes? Where is, where is the autonomy in this? Where is the autonomy concept or the forgiveness? Because according to Christianity and according to you, that you have to believe in the autonomy. That Jesus basically the sacrifice, the Lamb of God, that he sacrificed in order for your salvation. Yes? Yes. Now, a woman asking him about this, he could tell her, by the way, don't worry about that, I'm going to die soon for your sins, don't worry about it, just believe in this. He didn't say this there, he told her the prayer of God, he told her to, and asking God, forgive our sins just like we forgive others. For example, if I wronged you, and then I came to her, I said to you, sorry, you forgive me, that's how it is. And that's mercy, yeah? Now, the question is, if God is merciful, according to you, which you believe God is merciful, we just need to repent to God and God will forgive us. But if you have to believe in autonomy, that means there is no mercy, that means there is no forgiveness. The autonomy means no forgiveness without the autonomy, meaning the price. Either you pay full price or of or forgiving. You can't combine them. So if, if, if I need to apologize to you, I need to slaughter something or to do something in order to please you, that means you are taking full autonomy. You are not taking a forgiveness. You are not accepting forgiveness from me. So now, what was the teaching of Jesus? Was he teaching people about the autonomy? Oh, and there's always a price. Or was he teaching people that God is merciful, God is forgiving, repent to God and God will accept your uh, That's a question from our experienced theologian. What about you? Sorry. What do you think? Um, At the end of the day, in the day of judgment, the theologian will not answer on your behalf, you have to answer on behalf of yourself. So what do you think? Um, uh, uh, that's going to require um, a decision beyond my current mental states. No. What, he what Jesus taught the women, the say forgiveness, repent to God and God forgive. That's all. That's what Jesus was teaching. He wasn't teaching about the autonomy. He wasn't teaching about actually. He was wanted to escape from the autonomy. He was saying, he was saying, oh, take this cup away from me. He was begging God to take the cup away from him. He didn't. So someone was destined to be killed and crucified. Why did he? Why did he argue with God to say to him, you know why? You know. Why did he argue back with God? To, to take the cup away from him? He didn't argue with God, he is God, in according to theology. So if he is God, he was asking who to take the cup away from him? Himself. He was asking parts. himself? It's to three parts, yeah. One second. So he is asking himself to take the cup away from himself? I mean, this totally doesn't make sense. So do you see here, that's another problem. If he, if he is God, if he's asking himself, okay, when he was on the cross, yeah. Only him. Only me, only me. Only Just him. only me. Yeah. So when he was on the cross, according to Christian, he said, Oh, oh God, oh, 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 my, oh Father, why have we forsaken him? Who forsake who? God forsaken himself? Again, that's another problem. Adding to this, if God is love and merciful, God forgive. Just seek forgiveness. God will accept your repentance. You don't have to do this, you, all these things, and that's in the Old Testament, talking about this. Talking about forgiveness, talking about even the sacrifice in the Old Testament, and not talking about the sacrifice for the unintentional sins, not for the intentional sins. Yeah. Now here the question is to you, William. Does Islam make more sense to you than Christianity? Uh, well, there's a, there's a couple of problems I have with Islam. And like, I, I, tell me. I have nothing wrong no, with no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Well, it's academic, it's academic, it's academic, it's academic, academic. Yes, that's yeah. fine. Just tell me, what I, is it? I, we have, so we have the Prophet Muhammad, uh, yes. and he went into a cave, and he received the word of the angel Gabriel, which is the word of God. And we have no eyewitness accounts of what, the, what Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad said. He came down, 
and said, this is the word of God and this is the final word of God. Did he not say that? He did. Even from a standpoint, and well, allegedly he was illiterate. Is that not true? He was. So when you come down, this illiterate warlord, he used to be more, he became a warlord from heaven, uh, not from heaven, from the cave, to say, all of your religion, all of what you previously thought is wrong, this is the new version, this is the final version of the Abrahamic religion. To which we don't have much empirical evidence. From what we know, he could have been made up, we don't know, and that's my opinion. Obviously, we're all entitled to our own reliquaries, I don't know, nothing against that. Uh, to me, that seems too flimsy to make such a radical shift in the lifestyle. Choices, Good. Is... Let me answer the question one by one. First of all, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he was in Cape, he wasn't received the full Quran on that day and he came down. This is the Quan. This, this didn't happen. It was, it was a process. One, one second. The first revelation came to him when he was at the age of 40, when he was in the Cape, an angel Gabriel came to him. And there's something in the Old Testament they said, the one who's been given the book and he will be told, read, will say, I'm not like a reader. Who is in the history happens to an, to this, to an individual? Which one? You read the Old Testament, yes? The Old Testament. Yeah, did you read it? I've read some of it. I some of it. I don't take the Old Testament as its word. No, I'm, I'm not saying to take it, yeah. but I'm saying, I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying, I'm not taking the Old Testament for, for us. It's not a source of information for us. I'm just giving you some hint. Yes, yes. Yeah? You will find in the Old Testament, talking about a, an incident, Someone will be given the book, he will say, it will be said to him, read, and he will say, I'm not a reader. Yeah? So, in the history, there is no one applies to no one in the history except the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. That's one thing. Secondly, this is the beginning of the revelation. So, this is the first thing. It was revealed to him, read, in the name of your Lord. Read the name of the Lord, uh, read uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, your Lord, the one who created, uh, the one who created, created a human being from a cloth. And so, so, the, so the point is that Allah, has revealed to Muhammad this is the, f the first revelation. Now, over 23 years, the Quran keep coming on the Prophet peace be upon him. So the point is, the Quran wasn't didn't come in one go in the cave. That's one thing. The second thing, you are talking about our law. You know, when Jesus comes back according to Christianity, what is he gonna be a warrior? Well, the revelations is very specific. It comes down to the purge of sins. Sins. What he's gonna do? He sends the, the force of conquest, but that's not Jesus himself. Is it? No, no, one second. No, no, we're talking about Jesus himself. Yes. What he's gonna do? He reigns for a thousand years over us. What he's gonna do? That's what he does. In the he will. He will fight. Yeah, and so, the armies of yeah, hell. so the fight point is. Hell, the good, good. No, not communities. David fought communities by the will of God. Moses fought communities fought by the will of God, and Solomon and other prophets. Meaning the prophets of God. Some of them fought in, by the name of God, by the instruction of God, and some of them they didn't. Like Zechariah and Yahya, Zechariah and John, they didn't fight. But some prophets, they, were, they fought. Like Solomon, like David, like Moses and others, and, and Joshua and others. So, so fighting in the cause of God or for the will, by the will of God is not necessarily something which is wrong. Now, unless if there are a few things that if you see his history, so someone in the war will instruct, this is his instruction in the war. Don't kill a woman, don't kill a child, don't kill a priest, don't destroy a church, don't go to a, a, you know, a people who are safe and, and uh, who, who went to their homes and they closed their, their homes. And they... So all these instructions were, were instructed by the Prophet, peace be upon him. Excuse me, excuse me, they are recording behind you. Yeah, they are recording, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna go only me on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? So, so all these things, so these instructions tells you what? Yeah? So it's not about a war, it's about as well. There are certain things happened in the world, but in the same time, that there are some instructions being held by them. Now, in the same time, what we need to understand who inspired him to say all these things? All these prophecies that were said about him, he was telling us that Islam will reach by the East and the West. At the time where people, the Muslims, they were few. And now Islam is literally reached 
between East and West. All the way in the United States and Canada, they are Muslim. All the way in China, they are Muslims. In Australia, they are Muslim. So Islam is around the world, meaning Islam reaches all the people and, and nowadays. So he said this 1400 years ago. He said certain things that's going to happen, and it happened to us. These are prophecies from God. Now, either this book, yeah, I will tell you a few things. Firstly, Islam recognized one creator, the God, Allah. Allah is exactly the term that was used by Jesus, peace be upon him, in Aramaic. In Aramaic. No, ilah, ilah, by the way, in, 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 by the way, and Allah in Aramaic. As well, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the same. Yes. No, Ilah means God. Allah, the one God. By the way, it's for you to know. So in Aramaic and Arabic, we use the same term, Allah, Allah. Christian, Christian Arabs also say Allah. They Allah. So they know this. So we're talking about Allah. Now, to worship Allah alone, don't worship idols. Don't worship things. Do what God commanded you. Don't fornicate. Don't drink alcohol, for example, for us as Muslims. You know, do be righteous, be good to your neighbors. All of these are the these are the words of God. Not just that. Respect the prophets and messengers, honor them. We believe in all the prophets and messengers. We believe in Noah, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus, these were the prophets sent by God. We believe in Muhammad peace of him as the final and the last messenger. So these things. Now the question is we, we come to this conclusion. Now this book either was inspired by the devil to Muhammad. Or it was the work of Muhammad, he put things together. Or it was inspired by God. One of the three options. Do you have any other option? From the devil or from God? Yeah? You know, Muhammad tried to take control of Mecca. And also disrespect for religions, I find... Leave, li le now I'm talking about the Quran. We'll talk about, let's, uh, let's talk about the action. Let's talk about this, the, the Quran itself. Yes. Either it was inspired by the devil, or it was the work of Muhammad, he put things together, or it was revealed by God to him. What of the option? Do you have any other option? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Not. Let's discuss one of them, each one of them. If it was revealed, if it was inspired by the devil, you'll find in the Quran that Allah has cursed the devil throughout the Quran cursing the devil. And when we read the Quran, we say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. For you to know, it means we seek refuge and protection from God, from the outcast, from the whispers of the devil. So if it was inspired by the devil, why the devil would curse himself all that all throughout the Quran? Why is doing this? If it was the work of Muhammad, you find Allah has criticized Muhammad in the Quran itself, telling him, why have you done that? You should have done this. There is one, one situation that the Prophet, peace be upon him, there is a blind man came to him. He was talking to leaders of Quraysh. When he came, they made him angry and he was so angry. And then as soon as they left, a blind man came to ask about his faith. So when this blind man came, no one sees that except the Prophet peace be upon him. And he was angry. He had an angry face on him. Yeah. So the blind man asked some question and he answered him. The blind man couldn't see what happened. But Allah revealed the Quran to be recited by by two billion Muslims on earth, we recite Abasa wa Tawalla and the Ulama. Meaning, we showed a grumpy face, we showed an angry face when a blind man came to you. Now, why the Prophet will put himself to be criticized in his own work? There are many works out there, and I think there's a group of books proposed by George Orwell or something like that. Any work which doesn't have any some form of self-deprecation inside it often would be a propaganda piece, a first time of propaganda. Now, I would personally see a lot of personal novels uh, and biographies by the prime ministers, for example, are very self-deprecating comments inside them. Uh, it could, it could by the way, we're not talking about a book, we're talking about a book of religion, a book which is to be recited openly, publicly, in the front of everyone, recited. We don't read it like this. We read it in the middle this way, in the middle, in a, in a sound, in a singing way. And millions of people will listen to this recitation. Memorized by, by 15 million people on earth now. Which book on earth is memorized by this number? All these things tells you because Allah told us we have sent down this revelation and we'll be preserving it. So this is how Allah preserved it. So that's what we are saying to you. Do you have a Quran, a copy of the Quran at home? I do. You do? Have you read it? 
I fully regret it. I, I, I am very willing to acquiesce that I don't actually know much about yes. Pakistan. So it's been a very interesting conversation. Yeah, it was. And I, I'm happy with this conversation, by the way. And, and you are very respectful, and I respect what you said. Yes. But what, what, you want, what I want from you, you know, just today, so simple. If you are a God believer, true God believer, you go home, yeah, take a shower, sit down, say, oh God, I know you are there, I know you hear me, I know you see me. Help me. Buy and show me the guidance. Because here, when you say Jesus is God, by the way, earlier, we have a definition about God. We need to define God. What's God? God is all knowing, all powerful, has independent will. Jesus never take any of these boxes. He's not all powerful. He doesn't have independent will because he is relying on the Father. He conquered death. He's conquering death. One of the most key symptoms of something. We day, say day of by the will of God. Elijah, Elijah did, did something similar. Was able to bring someone to life. So the point is, these are things. Prophets and messengers are able to do things, miracles by the will of God. These things happen. Elijah did something similar. Now, adding to this, we have the last thing. If Jesus is all-knowing, which is a key thing in front of everyone, people came to him and asked him in public, when is the hour? Simple and straightforward question. The only one knows about the hour is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Yeah? Because he's knowing everything. But he said, what is his answer? No one knows about the hour but the Father. Neither the Son nor the angel. The only one knows about the hour is the Father. Now, if Jesus peacefully said this, it makes him ignorant about the hour. He doesn't know about the hour. So if he doesn't know about the hour, you may say, but in his human form, what do you mean? When he said, no one knows about the hour except the Father, meaning he doesn't know about the hour in any form. Don't say, he didn't say in my, in my human form, I don't know, but in my, he didn't say that. He said the Son doesn't know about the hour. Okay, but do Muslims believe in the Immaculate Conception? I, I, I believe they do. Which is, what is that? The Immaculate Conception. The idea that uh, the Virgin Mary was indeed a virgin and Jesus was... We believe Jesus was born from Virgin Mary. She was virgin. Yes. We, she wasn't, by the way, married to no one. Do you agree in the Immaculate Yeah, we believe it. And you agree that God is all-powerful and all-knowing? So he would know what would happen in the future if, if, for example, he would know in foresight that Jesus would die on the cross, preaching the word of God. So you agree that God... But by the way, about, 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 about the miracle of uh, creating a human being with no father, Adam is more miraculous because he was, born, he was created with no father and mother. So if, I mean, if, it's, if you see this so miraculous, someone will be born from virgin women, I'll see more miraculous to create someone with no father and mother, like Adam. To create someone from uh, the rib of a man, which is Adam, he's be upon him, Allah has created Eve from his rib. Yeah? So that's more miraculous. It was a miracle. The creation of man itself is a, is a unique event in theology. But if God knew that uh, Jesus would come miraculously onto earth, yeah, God, knew. God knew, but not Jesus doesn't know. God knew, but Jesus didn't know. No? That's our point. Because if he, if he doesn't know simple things, like including, for example, for example, I want to do something. Did Jesus know when the people came to take him to be crucified? Uh, well, he did hint it. He said there was a traitor amongst me with no evidence. That that Meaning is he's skeptical. Sorry? He's skeptical. He may be, maybe not. Yes. So he doesn't know fully. And then he just starts back against him. And so either if he knows fully, that means he committed suicide. Because if you are waiting for someone to kill you, that's suicide. If you know, if I go on this path, someone will kill me, that's suicide. Yes, yeah, so did he commit suicide? It's a sacrifice, it's not a suicide. No, no, it's a suicide. Because if Jesus doesn't make sense, doesn't make sense, sorry. So, and if he goes in a path that is going to be killed, so that's why. And the point is going back to the autonomy. Why the autonomy? The autonomy itself, the concept of the autonomy. Because we agree that God miraculously put Jesus on earth through an immaculate conception. That's agreed. Yeah, that's agreed. In canon. So God wanted Jesus on earth. Do you agree with that? Yes, of course. So do you think uh, he would have put Jesus on earth miraculously to preach the word of the Lord, uh, the word of, of, of himself, to then have him commit suicide? I believe he wasn't even crucified. I believe. But, uh, yeah, I believe he didn't crucify it because I believe. Because by the way, if you read, if you believe, uh, if you read about the, um, there is what's his name uh, of Antioch, uh, what's his name? 
there is one of the church father. His name is uh, no, no, not no uh, of, of Antioch. Was his name? Uh, was the name? Was the name of it? Uh, uh, Ignatius, I think. Uh, Ignatius. Ignatius. It's I G. I think. I think of of Antioch. Something of Antioch, Ignatius of Antioch, something like that. So he was one of the he was he was he was killed actually by hundred and something. And actually he was taken to Rome and he was taken sort of to Constantinople to be actually to be to be killed by to be eaten by the lions, etc. But he wrote during his time he wrote advising the people, he said, nowadays some of the Christians, so he recognized them as a Christian recognize them as Christian. He says, some of the Christian followers of Jesus, they do not accept the crucifixion or the, he, he was in favor for the crucifixion, which means the matter of crucifixion, it was a debatable matter between a Christian of the early church, the early church of the church father, meaning some, something was debatable. It's not something was affirmed. Ignatius wasn't a contemporary uh, hero of crucifixion. No, no, he wasn't. He came after. But my point is, he lived 100 and something, 115, 180, something like that. So we're talking about 100 years just after Jesus. We have some of the church fathers, some of the people who followers of the church, some of the people who used to be devoted Christians. Some of them are good about the crucifixion of Jesus. There's been heresy in... in no, no, he didn't, no, he didn't say it's heresy. He, he didn't attribute it as a heresy. He attributed it as a mistake. He didn't say it's heresy. Later on, it was heresy. That's why, because the, doc the Christian doctrine evolved over a period of time. So initially, because because Paul, yeah, that, that's why council council that they no, that's why they voted. You see here, here that's that's another problem. So, for example, for three hundred years, you have three hundred years until the Council of Nicaea. Some of the church fathers who attended. Some of them, they were monotheism, monotheists who believe in one God. They didn't believe just was, was, was God. There are some people who used to be, I don't know what call it, binarian or whatever. It means believing the Father and the Son. They didn't believe the Holy Ghost as part of the God. And we have as well Trinitarian who believe in the Trinity. So all of these slots, they were attending the Council of Nicaea. Yeah. Now, and then they voted. What happened? Constantine, he was he was a Trinitarian himself. What he did, he bribed some of the church fathers to vote for him. And then the one who the one who disagreed with him, or the one who literally ran away, he chased them and killed them. He himself. Constantine. And that's fact by the way. We're talking about historical fact. The sect split off, which disagreed with the, the fundamentality of the Nicene Creed, was the Coptic Christianity. No, 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 we're not talking about Coptic. No, we're, not, we're talking about Nazarenes. I'm talking about Nazarenes. Nazarenes who believed in one God. Nazarenes they didn't believe Jesus to be uh, a God. They believed. They still believed in one God. Jesus was part of God. No, 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 no. Nazarenes they didn't believe Jesus was part of God. Nazarenes believed Jesus was sent by God. Nazarenes believed, yeah. Nazarenes believed Jesus was sent by God. They did not believe Jesus is God, and that's why they were they were chased by by the Constantine, and then they ran away. They scattered around. But that wouldn't be Christianity. What? That wouldn't be Christianity. No, why? If they are not Christian, why they were invited? They know why they were under the Council of Nicaea. No, no. You see here, heresy was later imposed after. Before that, it wasn't heresy. For example, if I wanted to vote for, if I wanted to bring people to the church fathers, yeah, I will bring them, people who accept this. For example, nowadays, if Church of England, they want to decide something, the, the priests of the church, for the, of, the, of, uh, of, uh, of England church, they will get together. You don't find a Catholic church, a priest there, isn't it? Because my, that's not my point. My point is, if they, even if there is a Catholic gathering, they will not invite someone from Anglican church. The point is, they knew those people, they were monotheists and they were considered to be Christian. They were invited to the Council of Nasi to vote. And then they were adamant because they did not accept the bribe from Constantine. They were not, they didn't accept the threat of Constantine and they were adamant to, 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 to carry on with their faith. And what happened to them? As soon as this, 
that he start chasing them, and then when they run away, some of them being killed, so that they were scattered around. So what? And then, and then, and then they start imposing the heresy about them. They are the heretics. Actually, before the council of the council of Nasia, they were not heretics. Now suddenly, because they voted against this. Because they didn't accept this. They canonized Christianity and so on. Uh, they obviously untouchable documents. What? They set out what was heresy and what was not in this, in this definition. But, but that was later on. My point is, I'm, 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 I wanted you to go back to the Council of Nasir. It's <laughs> very important to acknowledge that Constantine was yeah. never officially a Christian. What? That it's very important to acknowledge that Constantine was never officially a Christian. Constantine is not officially a Christian. No. Okay, then who's a Christian? Sorry? Are we going to play? You see here, you see if... Are you a if, Christian? No, I'm not. If you say if Constantine is not Christian, Christians. yeah, <laughs> you see here, if Constantine, you know, if, if you believe that Constantine, he is the one actually who imposed the Trinity and made it part of the Trinity. And well, yeah. also one very important uh, my, my back hurts me, Akhi. The Edict of Milan liberalized uh, religious law across the Roman Empire. Meant Constantine was the one to instate into Roman law that no faith is above any other faith and that all religions have equal freedom in the empire. And he happened to use this as a mechanism to normalize and spread Christianity. But he didn't, but he wasn't, he wasn't as tolerant with a Christian, with a monotheist Christian like he was doing with others. He was okay with pagans, he was okay with that, but when it comes to the monotheist Christian, he chased them and killed them. The Roman, no, 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 that's a Constantine. terrible misconception. There was a lot of pagan persecution. The Temple of Jupiter was burned, well, I'm not necessarily Constantine, but later Roman emperors, and also under Constantine, pagan uh, worship came very outright. I, I understand. So Theodosius sacked the Western Roman Empire my, specifically to eradicate pagans. My, 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 my point is to you. Yes. I'm, I'm saying to you, in the first 300 years, the doctrine, of, the doctrine of Christianity evolved over that 300 years. So there used to be Paul who imposed that. Actually, Paul was binary; he was believed the Father, the Son. Most of the thing, he's talking about. He's talking about to baptize to, to baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. But actually, you will find him focusing in his old letters. Talking about the Father, the Son, the Father, the Son. He was one of the early ones talking about the Father, the Son. Uh, and, and then suddenly he was a bounty hunter. He was someone who used to chase Christian and hang. Saul of Tarsus. Yeah, it was Paul, Paul. Yes, he changed his name. Yeah. He had his road to Damascus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then suddenly he went to the. You said you're talking about Muhammad. He saw, and then Paul, he went to a mountain. He came down. Wow, he saw God. What God? And he saw God there. And God told them, by the way, we are three, we are not one, and then, then he start bringing all of these. You see here, so that's why actually, if you, if you read more, you will find the teachings of Jesus. And that's what we are, what we are saying to you. There are no gospel of Jesus in the Bible, nothing. The word of Jesus is so minor. And if you go check the, the word of Jesus, never said, I'm God, never said, worship me. In fact, he was saying to the people, worship this one God, seek forgiveness from one God, you know, Oh God, forgive us, just like we forgive others. That's what the teachings of Jesus. And I'm saying to you, go back, don't follow any gospel. Don't follow except follow what Jesus said. And Jesus never said about his crucifixion, that the salvation of the crucifixion. Where is the salvation of the crucifixion came from? Through crucifixion, where is that? Dying from the sins of man. How is that? How is that? Where is the forgiveness then? God dying for himself, so to save mankind. You see, that's the idea. Like you see here, himself. that's again, that's nonsense. If God is God is all powerful, all knowing, is able to forgive, you repent, you forgive. Simple. That's it. So it's not autonomy. So it's either. Uh, he betrayed God's free will, so God decides to make a loophole in the form of Jesus Christ. So he that one. So him. that's why to die for your sins. For someone who committed a crime, this is not justice. When you commit a crime, when you commit a sin, it has nothing to do with some innocent person to die for your sin. It has nothing to do. And think about it with our own analogy. Why to do it on behalf of mankind, where someone who's a criminal who committed certain crimes, who did the war crimes and did all of these horrible things, and say Jesus died for his sin? Where is the repentance then? Um, sorry, I can hear that. Where is the repentance then? 
what is the concept of repentance? In the previous, sorry, the previous things. So my point is, if someone committed all these horrible crimes and follow your Anglican church, you know, because some people who call themselves they follow Anglican church and they try to go burn mosques around and all of these things. Yeah. You know, they say we follow Anglican church. Well, hold on, hold on. By the way, I don't... The Prophet Muhammad did was when he went into the harbour, went to the mosque of Mecca, was knocked down all the idols. That's true, because that's true, that's true. That's yes. true. Do you know why? Sorry? Do you know why? You can't worship idols. But you can't worship idols. idols. You can't worship his perception to them, they were there. No so, there. are you justifying for these? Are you justifying for these far right to come and uh, to go and burn and burn mosques? No. Are you justifying this for them? Absolutely not. That's my point. So that's why Mecca is a special place where if you go to somewhere else, the Prophet peace be upon him instructed us not to harm any church. He instructed us when the Muslims wo warriors and they went to other lands where the Christian are. That, that's why I'm from Jordan. We have churches as as uh, you know as nearly 1,800 years. We have churches there. They were being untouched, unharmed, and they are they're still there. Orthodox Christians. There are, that, that's, I do remember in my history that the first thing the Muslims, the Umayyads did, the Rashidans did, when they took the city of Alexandria, was commit a kill or convert order. Is that that's, that's, not, that's not right. That's and actually, and actually... Were the Alawites not uh, horrifically oppressed in Syria? Who was that? Alawites? The Alawites. Okay. Celebrate Christmas. All right. Now, before we go to the Alawites, let's talk about the, the, what you said, the, the nonsense that you just said earlier. When the Muslims went to Egypt and Alexander and other things, they were called by the Coptic Christian against who? the Roman Christian, Catholic, who used to impose and enforce Catholicism on the people. This wasn't the Catholicism of today. It was uh, an Orthodox. Cause before, this was before no, 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 actually, not was, not was all the, the Coptic Church, and, and that, by the way, the, way, the Coptic church, and by the way, people, the, the majority are Coptic Christian. Yeah, they've been oppressed by other Christians, oppressed by them, forcing them to follow their way, where they believe that for us, both of them, they are Christian. But when someone is being oppressed by someone else, a colonization power, which is this, which is the, the Roman. So that's why when the Muslims went there. Umayyads were a colonial power, no? Yeah. Umayyads. Am I Umayyad? Yeah, the yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm not. I'm not. By the way, I'm not here hiding. I'm not here to say it's wrong. Or, I'm saying to you how how Islam deal with things. For example, Islam firstly offers people to accept Islam. You don't accept Islam. Offers people have a treaty, a peace treaty. You know, let's have our dialogues, whatever it is. Let's have it. No problem. You have your faith, I have my faith, and no, no problem. Like the Jews, they were in Medina, and then the, nothing happened, you know. They kept themselves, they stayed Jews, nothing, no one harmed them, yeah. Now, the next thing, which is the, the following step, which is, if you don't want to accept this, because in the past, if you don't have a treaty with the country, that means you're enemy. So that's how it is. There is no, what you call it, you know, the United Nations, whatever. So, either you are on our side, we try to have kind of a good relationship with each other, sending ambassadors, you know, whatever, diplomatic exchange, etc. And this used to, be, used to happen. And when there is no, that means that people they are in a state of fall to them. So they may attack or they may be attacked. So that's how it is. Even when the Muslims enter a land, no one being enforced. Allah says to us in the Quran, that's the teaching of Islam. There's no compulsion in the faith of Islam. No one is forced to be Muslim. So people, they accept Islam willingly. If people accepting Islam, that's totally their choice. And if they don't want to accept Islam, it's totally their choice. That's what Islam is teaching us. That's why you'll find when the Prophet Peace went to Medina, the Jews they kept their faith. And that's why when Islam, that's why if Islam if Islam forcing Islam on people, you will find zero percent of a Christian in Jordan, you'll find zero percent of a Christian in, in in Syria, zero percent of a Christian in, uh, in in Egypt. How they stay? Because Islam allows them today to stay. And, and they were under Islamic ruling and under Islamic caliphate. So they were not forced to change their faith. Unlike, 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 unlike the, the British colonization who went to Africa and took and enslaved African Muslims, took them to the Caribbean, changed their faith, who forcing the them to change. the oppressors of Africans in history? You it guys. It was the Turks. You guys. It was the Turks. No, no, British. British, I will tell you. Do you know what's the Mad King? What's his name, by the way? The Mad King, the Belgian Mad King. Uh, Leopold II. Leopold, okay. So that's it. 
you know how many millions he killed himself alone? Let alone, let alone the other ones. Just him, how many people he killed himself? Let alone, do you know how many millions? Eleven million. Eleven million. Alone, among that, he killed 11 million. You see the oppressor? What the tech, did the tech, the whole tech empire, empire, they didn't kill that amount from all people. Those people, this guy, within his lifetime, within 20 years or 30 years of ruling, he killed 11 million Africans. And you said, who's the most oppressor? Come on. Either, 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 either you don't read the history, Either you don't read the history or you don't want to read Look, the history. Mauritania was the last country in history to abolish slavery in 2007, a large portion of which are still slaves. What is these Muslim countries? Saudi Arabia, 1963, last country to abolish slavery in the Middle East. It's always these Muslim countries with these uh, more regressive countries. Okay. okay. Now, here, now, now here, enlightenment. Now here, my, my question is, let's go to the doctrine. Yes. Why we go far? Because you, what you are bringing, you are bringing things. Yeah, you are bringing some... Yeah. Oh, may I make one more point? No, no. Let me finish. One more point. In Istanbul, in the Ottoman Empire, and there was the, the laws which were imposed. It was more liberal than with Europe before the Thirty Years' War and the Peace of Westphalia, where Europe opened and liberalized. But let's not forget that under the law of the Ottoman Empire, many non Christians, including Greeks, Jews, had severe taxes imposed on them for okay. not being Muslim. This was, in effect, okay. a way of trying to get okay. them to convert. What you, are bringing, what you are bringing to me. You are bringing to me the act of the people rather than to bring to me the, you know, the revelation of God. Yes, yes. Now for me, no one can represent Islam except Islam itself. Yes. The Quran and the authentic son of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Now, for us, going back to your point, if we wanted to challenge about what they have done, at least even that you said the Turkic, whatever, even the enslaving people, whatever. By the way, Turkey or uh, the Ottoman Empire was one of the first one who signed actually freeing the slaves actually with the, with other during the enlightenment, the enlightenment time which has happened by the way just for you to know that's out of history even because you attacked it before you attacked that country before but you didn't recognize you didn't recognize that they abolished that they abolished that they abolished slavery I think in 1800 uh, 18 something so one of the earliest ones actually who were in favor of abolishing slavery that's for you to know now now here if you so so that's why some countries accept so at the end of the day these are policies and politics of the countries which is at the end of the day we don't believe those people are infallible we believe people they make mistakes they have their own shortcomings that's on a side yes. but we're talking about the doctrine yes. now you said because according to the old testament yeah and even though you're saying you don't believe in the old testament but actually many of the christians they believe the bible it's not just only the New Testament. The Bible is the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament, Jesus, Jesus in the Old Testament, Jesus, the God, because he was God before he became a man, was God. So he, he instructed, he, inst he instructed Moses and his army to kill from the Palestinians every single. He he instructed. No, no. What, I didn't finish. The Old Testament forgave the sins of the sinners. No. He said the, the Old Testament. Sins of the past, they very sternly rebuked the Old Testament. Furthermore, many, there's also more narratives about how the Old Testament was okay. slavery. Many Bibles that doctors by Europeans in order to fit political narratives, which have retained their relevance through history. Okay. I think so, Jesus, so Jesus, Jesus in the Old Testament, he instructed Moses and Joshua and, and, and his people, for the, for the Palestinians, kill every single man woman and child. This is the love of Jesus, by the way. So the love of Jesus was instructing Moses and Joshua, kill every single man, woman and child, even donkeys. I don't know what the donkeys has done to them. I, I don't get it. Donkeys, what they have done? They were just carrying things. What they have done to them to be killed by the instructions of Jesus, yeah? And only those young girls who never met a man bring them to you. So, so here, there is Bible evidence. There's biblical evidence that there's That's it. It's so, so no, 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 there is no metaphor. No, no, no. No, he's talking about Palestinians, but literally people, there is a war happens, and Jesus instructed those, the people in this war, he instructed them, actually he, he commanded them to kill every single man and a woman and a child, even donkeys. 
So if Jesus, who you say... important to mention the context of the first five books in the Bible. They are entirely meant metaphorically. No, oh, no, that's your, that's your thing, no. Who said that? Who said that they are metaphorical? So, so, so Jesus... Or the siege of Jericho. There are none of it, there, even according to the dates in the Bible where it's said to have happened, there is absolutely no evidence that it was under the kingdom. All oh, right. Let, it, let us listen. Let us accept what you said. Okay. Let, in hypothesis, even though that's nonsense, because it, it's, it, was, it was an instruction during the war. Now, adding instruction, you know, instruction means instruct. He instructed, Jesus instructed. And what appears in the New Testament, since you are a believer of the New Testament, and you are adamant to the New Testament, so Jesus, he was standing, he said, bring those who doesn't accept me as a king and slay them before me. Why did he say that? Because again, Jesus said, the Old Testament... No, this New Testament. That's the New Testament. The New Testament. Said, Jesus said, now is wording from your New Testament. The wording. You want me to read it from the Bible itself, yeah? You read the King James, yeah? Ah, uh, yes. Friends having an argument of her own. Uh, yeah, it's, it's good to say. Yeah, yeah. It's a... Uh... Luke. Luke, Luke 19.27 Yeah, which one that you prefer? Um, King James? But those, mine enemy Yeah, uh, okay But those, my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them Bring hither, which bring them, and slay them before me Slay, slay. And slay. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Slay. So, why did he say this? Uh, I'm not a biblical scholar. I'm sure that's meaning, but I don't believe Jesus, the forgiver of sins. Yeah, that's the forgiver of sins here. Yeah. Uh, do, you know, do you know what, what Christian they say? Listen, I will help you. You know what Christian when we discuss? There's a parable. <laughs> So parable. So do you think? Do you think? There are equal levels. Do you think? Someone, listen. Someone, someone who's literally like these scumbags of the far right, those ones who come when they read this. Do you think they distinguish between parable and non-parable? I don't think many of them read the Bible. Yeah. So if they read this, what do you think? When the crusader came, by the way, to that when the crusader included crusades, when the even the when the crusades came to to us to the to the Middle East including Richard, the Lion King, which is actually, he was a respected figure, and he was someone who was representing Saladin the church. Saladin gave him the horse as a, as a gesture of good faith. Yeah, and go back. So, but my point is, I'm talking about the crusader who came. In the beginning, in the first of their coming, they came based on this, not on parables, based on this. The one who doesn't accept Jesus no, as there, king, slay him. The crusade, crusade, crusade. They have nothing. Listen, crusade. They have nothing to do with Byzantines. Has nothing to do. Crusade. Crusade has nothing to do with the Byzantines. That's no, later on. Because they are the French king or oh, no, no, during that time. Yeah, yeah. May, may I explain, perhaps? So the Byzantine Emperor... So Anastasius, you defend them, you defend the Crusade, yeah? Uh, no, Anastasius. Uh, it's important to... So do, do, do you condemn them? It's not, yeah, of course I condemn them. Okay, good. Uh, that means well, well, there is no point to discuss because because if you if you condemn them, then we are on one page. But no it's problem. It's important to remember historical context and not apply the political points in modern times. No, I'm not. I'm not talking. I'm talking. The crusade. They were scumbags. That's what I want to hear. Yes. Yes. And I think the Seljuk Turks were scumbags as well. I, I think that they were. Depends. Depends what you mean by them. Because by the way, even the the, the what do you call it? The, what what what's their name? No. Hold on. Hold on. Can the Seljuk. The Seljuk. I have some time to uh, explain. What? Uh, sketch in the historical context. And, and by the way, I will tell you something. Yeah. Yes. Because when you attack people, innocent people, by the way, I, I condemn any attacking innocent people. Likewise. And even if the Turk you know, attacked Likewise. some innocent people, I have, I condemn them. I have nothing to hide. We, we, for us as Muslims, we have a standard. We have, we have a standard. For example, there is an extremist guy here, which I believe is an extremist guy. So I condemn him. 
I don't attribute him as a brother to me because he's an extremist. So my point is, we have no issues to criticize. But the problem is, with the Christian, they are biased. They are biased with their with their Christian fellows, and that's which I which I hate perhaps, actually. Could I perhaps explain uh, the historical uh, uh, context uh, to the, what happened with the Crusade because it's very misconstrued throughout history. Uh, the Seljuk Turks were a, a remnant of splinter of what was called the Goat Turk Parliament, which was then conquered the Samanid Empire of Iran and took on Persian and Islam, and that's how their connection to Islam appears. Uh, from there, no, they tried uh, to you, 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 have, you have a misconception. That's not, that's not the history. The history, actually, the soldiers, they were already Muslims. Before that, the, the, you're yes, talking about, yes, you're before, talking about Persians, your... No, Persians Islamized them. Uh, and no, 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 not the Persian, the Muslims. Islam. Because during that time, Persia wasn't, wasn't Persia as we know. At that time, they were, they, they were, they were, no, Abbasid, Abbasid Empire. No, 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 the, the Seljuk, the Empire, the, the Abbasid were gone by this point. No, the, the Abbasid, Abbasid, they were weak. The, 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 the Abbasid. by a power called the Ghaznavid Empire, which then tried to attack the Seljuk Turks. The Turks then proceeded to take Persia, and from there, they decided to go across the Zagros, into what we call, uh, into the Baghdad. And seeing this, they decided to call themselves the inheritors of the Abbasid, uh, the Abbasid Caliphate and the inheritors to the Persian Empire. Okay. And then they decided to change the attack entirely and call themselves the Roman Empire. And after all, the Roman Empire, I don't know what that. By the way, no, no. no. But, but that's but hold on, hold on. for me. For me, the that's not the point. Empire, which was obviously the actual Roman Empire. Okay. The Celtics then went to war with what was the Byzantine Empire at that point, to which then the Emperor Anastasius called on. Pope Urban II to call a crusade to re-evaluate and retake the Holy Re a Roman Empire, the Holy, sorry, the Roman Empire, under the guise of protecting Jerusalem. It was not a religious conflict; it was a conflict of realist political interests. I understand. So that's for me. My point is to you: we are discussing here a religious matter. We're not talking about politics. And then you the yeah. My point is to you, which is, again I keep repeating this to you. Yes. Um, sorry, I'm in lovely chat with you. I what? Really, I've had, sorry, uh, I've genuinely learned so much. Uh, do you mind? Uh, uh, okay, I think I, 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 at the end of the day, it was a good discussion with you. I, I, I had a and chat. I was, you were very intelligent. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. All right, take care of yourself. All right, take care of yourself. Anyways, we have, uh, Alhamdulillah, we had a good discussion, hopefully. <laughs> It goes all over the place, by the way. By the way, it was good, alhamdulillah. That conversation was good. And um, guidance from Allah. May Allah guide you. Jazakum Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Nordun. Naam.